morning champions and welcome back to another episode. We're going to be back on the hunt for some Ludric today, but going to be chasing them in the harbour. Which, you'd have to be an absolute bad one to chase them off the rocks today. But, first step, we're getting some cabbage with some uh, bait and burley. So we're just going to be heading down to that little ledge down there. But it looks like old mate's picking up a bit right now. low tide and this is usually pretty high and dry but uh, we've got a pretty mega swell happening at the moment and it seems to have uh, ripped out a fair bit of this cabbage as well but there's still a fair bit there. You will notice that big swells tend to thin it down as well as if you have long periods of uh, flat swell because they do need a little bit of wash coming up over the rocks every now and then and that'll kind of set you in the right direction to um, finding some cabbage for yourself. Anyway, it's going to be picking the bait first, so all I'm looking for is some nice long streaks. And just like when chasing them off the rocks, I want to keep the root attached, which you just got the root up there. That's a prime little bait there, but some nice longer bits is always good. But yeah, you just want to pick the whole plant for collecting your bait. When I switch to getting burly in a bit, I don't really mind just taking you know, the tips of the leaves, and that way the plant's gonna regrow. And this stuff is the kind of darker cabbage where I usually like the light green stuff, but this should still catch fish. Little bait bucket's pretty handy when you're collecting your bait. Keeps your hands free. Here's a nice bit here. Beautiful. All right, so that's going to be plenty of bait. And that's going to be plenty of burley as well. No need to take more than what you're going to use. It does tend to get pretty smashed in these winter seasons, the old cabbage, as people get into the black fishing. So that's sorted. Now we're just going to need some sand for the burley mix. And what I like to go is go about Go five or six times the amount of uh, cabbage you got there, so it's going to be about nearly half a bucket of sand. All right, and there we have it, all set. And you just want to make sure that it's not completely wet sand. This stuff's a little bit damp, but dry sand will be best because then you can just add the right amount of water to it to get the right consistency you want, which I'll show you in a bit. Anyways, I'll catch you down the harbour. Well, here we are, guys, the majestic Newcastle Harbour. Pretty special episode today. We've got our first guest angler, my mate Dino Buckpit. How are you going? Good, mate. That's good. Bloody oh. What's your favourite fish to catch, Dino? Ludwig. I reckon he's the man for the job. Bloody oh. Right, while well, he's having a flick, I'm going to go down to sorting out this burley. So I'll show you what's going on there. Alright, so all I did was separate the weed and the sand. Dipped all the weed out. I've just got this last little bit to chop. Kitchen shears, they're pretty handy for uh, chopping your mix up. The finer you can get it, the better, but you don't want to take too long. And if you don't have any scissors or kitchen shears, um, just a chopping it using a knife on a bait board to go. Make sure you wash them out, otherwise these won't last long at all. I'm just going to add the sand back in. Probably going to use all the sand. Give it a mix, see how she's looking. Yeah, might as well use all of it. Beautiful, and that's looking good to me. That's a pretty rich looking burly. You wouldn't want it much, much more sand, uh, weed to sand ratio than that. All right, next we're just gonna add a little bit of seawater and I've just got some in this bottle just to make it easy. Just gonna add a bit of time. 
and you just want to dampen it up. Smidgen more. And you just want it so it's going to form nice balls. If it's too dry, the uh, sand's going to spread out and the weed's going to spread out when you're throwing it and when it hits the water. And it's not going to sink properly. Same thing as if it's really wet, it's going to spread out too and it will just kind of uh, disperse kind of near the surface instead of if you form a nice ball like that and you drop it in the water, it's going to sink and spread out and you're going to have a nice bit of burley through the whole water column. A little bit more, why not? And then lastly, just going to cut this bottle. Jesus. Oh, and Dino's on. Look at that, beautiful. He's not a bad fish. And so we didn't use the long handle net off the rocks. They might be um, handy in certain situations, oh, but I was just, oh, he's dropped him. That's all right. Cooked it. He's cooked it. But yeah, in these environments, you definitely want to get a net happening because um, if you try and lift them, you're just going to possibly snap line, but more likely just pull the hooks because they do have those soft mouths. Right. So, and this is what we're going to use to chuck in our belly, and it's just going to stop your sands get your hands getting sandy and getting sand all over your reel. So, I just like to get a nice little cup full, and we're just going to hoik a bit of that in every five minutes to so, say ten minutes. And that should get them on the chute. All right, and so I'm just using the exact same setup and rigging that I was using off the rocks, which, which you can find that episode right there. The only difference is that I've gone down a float size, so this is one of the eight gram floats from that ludwig.com.au site, as well as still using a weed fly. And I've gone eight pound fluorocarbon from the swivel down to my weed fly and then running four pound down to my actual bait and I like using four pound in these estuaries they fight a little less hard there's less things for them to bust you up on but still plenty and the four pound is just a little bit more invis invisible to them as well as if I hook the bottom it just means that that four pound is going to break and I should still have my weed float So we're just fishing off the breakwater today, which is, you know, prime territory for estuary ludric. And they're usually pretty common in most places, but natural rock bars, jetties near a rocky, weedy bottom, they're all going to be fair game. You're not really going to find your ludric over just sandy flats or anything like that. But anywhere with a bit of rock, a bit of structure, you're in with a chance. So at this particular spot, it probably drops down to about five metres pretty quickly. Oh, and we've got it down, going to let him have it. And we're into him. Oh, he's only a little fish. Only a very little fish. Oh, actually, I can just feel from the way he's darting around that he's pretty little. Actually, he's not bad. He's a keeper. But so I was saying it was goes down to about five metres pretty quick here. Um, so they could be sitting anywhere along the drop off. So you could want your bait just sitting about a metre and a half under the surface or all the way down to three metres. It really just depends on the day. And the other difference that I've got here with this on the shore is a long handled net. Whereas off the rocks we were able to wash them up onto the ledge, you're going to want a net because if you try and lift these fish, you're likely just to uh, pull the hooks or snap that four pound leader. Anyways, there's the first fish. 
So there we go, there's that little guy, and he's a little guy. He would probably be legal, you know, they only have to be 27 centimetres. But I reckon we've got a fair chance of getting some bigger ones, so I'll unhook him and throw him back. All right, now we're back out there. So yeah, I'm fishing about nine foot, and I'm just gonna see if it needs to change. If we're getting fish about that nine foot, I'll leave it there. If I'm getting none, I'll probably go deeper. And if none there, I'll probably come in really close and go quite shallow. And what we've got today, we're near the top of the tide. Um, and what I've found with Luderick, you definitely want a little bit of tidal movement. The old adage, no run, no fun, kind of applies to them. So either side of the tide, if I had to pick high tide or low tide to fish over, high tide's a little bit better. The kind of the top half of the high either coming up or going back down would be my favourite conditions for in here. We just got a little touch before. If there's heaps of little fish around, I'm just going to stop the burley. And um, we're going to see if they bugger off and a few bigger ones just start cruising up and down. And I'm not going to go too much into the gear to use for these guys on this one. I went through that pretty in depth on the rock fishing one, which I'll put in the top right of the screen again now. But the same rules apply. You're going to want a pretty long, slow tapered or soft rod to soak up their, their head shaky fights and about 10 pound for a main line is the go in the estuaries. I'm using that float line, which is still great for this, as well as the center pins are just awesome in all situations, basically. An egg beater would do just as well, or is handier in these estuaries than off your rocks, but you can't beat the old center pin for just a bit of line control. And it looks like Dino's got one. Looks like a bit of a better one this one. Oh, pigeons getting in on the action. A little bit better. Yeah, give me a bit of curry. I'll put that one there for you, mate. Yeah, he is a better fish, and it looks like I'm getting a little bit of a down as well. So I'm going to pick this back into the chest. Actually, I think I've just got the bottom. You can just tell by the way the float isn't really going down any further. It's just angling to the side. And then has got a good fish. Taking a bit of drag. Actually, I've just got to get my line out of the way. You don't want to rush them. Just wait for them to try themselves out a bit. When they're flapping around on the surface, just slip that, that net underneath them. Oh, so close. Yes, he's a much better fish. So this is the quality of fish that'll come into these harbour systems as the winter progresses. They move up the coast, lovely. Yeah, they'll move up the coast and come into these harbours and the river mouths and things like that to spawn. Nice fish, mate. There we go. That is a lovely ludric. Could be that upper 30s, maybe even touching the 40. Good fish, Dino. And so yeah, same as off the rocks, you're gonna wanna keep them fresh. So we're just gonna chuck them in that catch bag and probably go hang them off that bit of jetty over there. All right, and I showed it off in that rock fishing one, but I'll just quickly demonstrate again how I like to thread these cabbage baits on. So that's a number eight little daichi hook. And I like to use even smaller baits in the estuary. So I've got a little leaf of cabbage and it's just got the root section is up there, which is a little tougher than the rest of it. So we're gonna lay the hook next to it. Let's do a couple of half hitches over that root section, right down near the eye of the hook. And then we're just going to thread it on like any other bait. Just go through a couple times. 
make sure the hook, po hook point is shown and that is a tasty little morsel for one of these estuary ludric. Ah, well we're being plagued by little fish at the moment. It might be time to stop the burley, grab a coffee and see what happens if we just give it a rest for half an hour. Because we don't want them ones. He's just chewing on it. There he is. Alright, we got him. Again, he's only a little... F oh, we've actually got a legal one, you beauty. So he's not a monster, but he's going to be for dinner if I get him. He's certainly going to be big enough. And so that was just, we've been fishing for quite a while. It was the top of the tide, there wasn't much run. As well as fishing pretty shallow and I've just gone down to probably about three meters and I've just picked this one up. So hopefully we've cracked the code for the day. And we get a couple of them. And Dino's on as well, yeah boy. How's your one? Ooh. Beautiful, alright. I'm on the board. And Dino's got a little tacker over there. Bloody oath. So there we go. Nothing monstrous, but that's perfect eating size, around about that 32 or something centimetres or so. You'll see a bit of that cabbage poking out of his mouth. You beauty! He's another good fish. So you, you can't bully him, just let him go if they want to. Oh, and I've got a down. Uh, has he come back up? Oh, I've missed him. Yeah, you just gotta wait for the opportunity. Try and get him flapping on the surface and just slide that net under. Ah, oh, beautiful. Love your work, Dino. Another quality fish. Oh, there we go, there's that one. Another chunky fish. Beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems we've got a bit of live music to accompany us. That's all right. Hope they're good. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, there's a nice down into him. Yes, and there's a better one. There's a much better one. Little beauty. Oh, this is a very good fish. Or is it just a little one that's going hard? No, I think this is a very, very good fish. Not bad. He's not, not monstrous, but he's just got a couple really good runs in him. That's it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, he's only a mid-sized one, but he's just got a fair bit of heart going on. They got the tunes aboard him on the chew. You know what? We actually got him on the weed fly. <laughs> 10 out of 10 net job there. That's how you do it. I just wanted to fight him a bit more, you know. All right, take two. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, that's two for dinner. Sorted. Rightio, there's that one there. Again, he's only maybe 33 or so, but perfect eating size. And 
there's that weed fly just in the corner of the mouth. But I was cheating a little bit. What I've been doing is just slipping on a tiny sliver of the cabbage just over the hook of the weed fly, just putting it through once. There we go, another one for dinner. How's that one feel, Dino? Better fish? So the big ones might have come out to play. It's just been a change of tactics. We've been fishing. Yeah, it looks good. We've just been fishing around that three metre mark or so, and we've just dropped it down to about four metres and started flicking right out the back. Be down where about the break wall meets the sand. Here we have a good fish. There he is there. Let's see if we can get him for him. Oh, he nearly came out of the net. Beautiful. All right, I'll hand that off to Dino, and we're going to get back in there. Very nice one. And Dino is on. We get the net for him. Good one. Oh, I've got it down, man. It's all happening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this one feels not bad. He's all right. My one's all right. No, nah, mine's not either. Look at this double hookup. Hey, Dino, what do you reckon? <laughs> oh, mine's not bad, actually. So I'm going to be a cheeky bugger. I've got the net here with me, so I'm going to get mine first. Ah. Right, here we go. Come on, buddy. Come on, just stay up a bit longer. There we go. Look at this. Oh, so close. Uh oh. Little ludic action, Jesus. Oh, not yet. No, not yet. Jeez, when it rains, it pours, eh? Let, yeah, let him out a bit that way for us. Oh, come on, mate. Oh, two in the net, you beauty. <laughs> There's those two. Couple nice eating size run. The old double headed there now, you beauty. Yep. Super slow down. And I don't think he's going to be a monster. Funky tunes in the background. Oh, we Jesus. Cardano. Let's have a look at ya. That is another legal fish. And they just sit there doing that very head shaky fight. There's that little guy right there. It'd be a legal fish, but we're gonna let him go. But what I wanna do now is just show you how I like to clean my Ludric up. Talk a little bit how to look after the fish because you do wanna treat them right if you wanna get the best bit of fillet off them. So we've got ourselves a pretty healthy looking bag here at the moment. I've just pulled this out of the water. We've made sure these fish have stayed nice and fresh. And you want to do that with your ludric. You want to treat them right, otherwise your uh, flesh is going to start tasting a little weedy. So what you want to do to make sure you get the best bit of meat off them is we're going to brain spike them. And here, if you just follow this little gill flap here up to that spot right there, you're going to find the brain. And as soon as you get in there, you'll just notice that their fins are going to flare up, their eyes are going to twitch a little bit. And that's it, he's dispatched. Next you want to do is bleed them. So we're just going to cut right down to the back of the spine there and I've just got a bucket of salt water here and we're just going to chuck them in that and that's just going to help the, the bleeding process a little bit. So quick as we can, we're just going to do this to all the fish here and then we'll go from there. Here 
And don't worry, once you brain spike them, the heart is going to keep beating for quite a while, so they're going to bleed out, no worries. You may as well brain spike them before slitting their throat, just seems the right thing to do. So again, you just got to follow that first little gill up, right there, just above the eye, kind of. And there we go, that's him done. Make sure you give it a bit of a jiggle around. If you just poke it in there and then leave it, what you'll find is they're likely dead, but they can keep breathing and that kind of stuff. Keep jiggling around. Anyways, I'll keep up with that. We're gonna chuck them all in here and we'll go from there. Rightio, all the fish have been in there for five minutes. They're gonna be well and truly bled out. Now, what I've done in the past is I'll just start fielding these fish straight away. But what I want to do today, and I reckon this would be the best way to get quality meat off the fish, is we're now going to chill them, not for too long, probably just at a 15 minutes or so. But what I've got is a little fish bag. It's got a couple of ice bricks in there, and that's ice out of a two litre milk bottle. And I've just filled that with some seawater, nice clean seawater earlier in the day. So I'm just going to chuck all the fish in there, and we're just going to give them 15 minutes to chill down. And that should make the meat absolutely prime over eating as well as it's going to make the fish a bit easier to fill it because the, the uh, flesh will firm up so i'm just going to chuck all of them in there and have another little flick and then we'll come back and fill it them all right so just going to let those fish chill for a little bit i just thought i'd go back over a couple of points in case anyone's just trying to catch them and they're just having no luck so it's going to come down to picking a spot. There's natural, oh sorry, man-made rock walls, natural weed and rock beds, that kind of thing. Jetties with weeds and rock next to them. They're all going to be prime targets. And also fishing the tide, as in no slack water. So we really started braining them this afternoon when the tide started flowing fairly quickly again. The last one is change your depth. If you're uh, having no success, try going a little deeper and probably a little further out, or try going shallower and much closer in. Uh, missed him. But that was a big part of the success. Me and Dino had the Sabo as well, is just changing the depth. We were trying to fish where we usually get them, and that's about you know two metres, two and a half metres down. And once we changed to about four metres down and casting further out the back, we just started getting them. Anyway, so I'm going to see if I can get a couple more just for fun and then we'll get back to Fillerton. Alright guys, time to run you through how Fillerton these ones or how I like to do it. So what we're going to need is a little cutting board. That's just going to be essential for skinning the fish. Good Fillerton knife. This is a Victory Knox Swebo, which I really like these. They're pretty cheap, but they go pretty good. A little knife sharpener, but this isn't going to get a dull knife very sharp, but it is going to help with keeping a sharp knife sharp. If you just run the knife through it every couple of fish or so. Also just got a bucket of the water we caught the fish in, and I'm going to try not to wash the fillets if I can. Um, it's going to be for washing down the cutting board and washing the knife. If you do need to wash your fillets, you do got to make sure, and it's a saltwater fish, you've got to make sure you do it in seawater, otherwise it's just going to wash all the goodness, all the fishy goodness out of it. Right, going to pass the camera over to Dino and we'll get into this fish. So, first thing you want to do is just at the top of the fish, just right next to the spines there, just start slicing in. And as soon as you've broken the skin like that, we're going to put the tip of the knife in and we're just pressing down against the, the spines that come out from the backbone. We're pressing down against those and just doing clean slices up towards the arm head. So pressing down, clean slice. But you don't want to saw at it, otherwise you're just going to take little ribbons of flesh off and um, the field's not going to be looking too good. You want to get down to the backbone, which notice that clicking sound when you get down there. Once you've gone to the head, we're going to go down to the tail. Same thing. Pressing the knife flat against the fish. Just nice, long, clean slices to get right the way down the tail and also down to the backbone. 
once we get there, I like to just pop over the spine. I'm gonna take it out right about where that fin is. And pressing the knife flat against the spine, just slice down to the tail. Once you've done that, just gonna bend the knife over the spine a little bit like this. And just gonna slice up that way. And we've reached the back of the pin bones there. So in the fish, you're gonna have the rib bones here and there's gonna be your bones sticking straight up like that, which are the pin bones. We're just gonna to get to the back of there. And then we're actually gonna flip the fish over because it's much gonna be much easier to get a nice clean fillet pressing down against, against the uh, spines that come out if that fillet stays on. So the exact same thing, just slicing at the top of the fish working towards the tail of the head. Nice long clean slices. So we get down to the backbone, there's that clicking sound up towards the head. There we go. So going down towards that fin. There we go slicing down towards the tail. Then just going to be peeling that flesh away from the center there. Beautiful until we get to the, those pin bones right there too. Once we've done that, we're going to cut down behind the head. Just about a 45, just trying to get as much meat as possible. And connecting up with where we've sliced through to. We're going to cut down to the pin bones and they're pretty weak but you just got to put a little bit of force in it to cut through. You can start from this end or this end. But we're going to go through the pin bones and then follow the rib cage down just like this. Some people do just cut, cut the pin bones out now and miss out on this belly meat and there's not much there but it just gets so beautiful when you um, fry these up. And I'm not going to go into cooking these guys but that is probably my favorite way to cook these is just dust them in flour, an egg wash, and then panko breadcrumbs and uh, shallow fry them and they're absolutely beautiful. So we're just gonna slice down against, following the rib bones there. And once you get to this bit, instead of cutting like this, just lay the fillet flat again and you're just gonna get a super clean fillet. So we would do the exact same on this side actually, we might as well. So we've gone up there angle it behind the head, cutting down and connecting up with what we've already cut through, just like that. And then we're going to go through those, rib, those pin bones, you hear them go snap, snap, snap. And then we're just going to follow the ribs down, just like that. And we're getting that beautiful belly meat. Then once we've kind of cleared the ribs out, I've actually just accidentally picked up those ones there. So we'll shave them off. So, and then I just put the knife in and we're going to keep following the ribs down like that. And again, lay the fillet flat on the fish when you do this final little cut here. There we go, a couple beautiful fillets. Next step is we're going to skin them, which you do want a sharp knife for. I'm just going to give the board a little bit of wash. Radio, skidding them. So all you're going to do, just get your fingernail, just plant it, pinch it against the board right there. Going to start putting the knife in, and what we're doing is making that knife go flat against the board like that. So pinching it down. Going flat against the board. Just, once we've got a little bit there, we're going to pick up the fillet, pinch it with our thumbnail again, and it's a combination of just jiggling the knife and pushing it away from you like that while keeping it flat on the board. But just as much, we're going to be pulling the fillet and jiggling it as well. So, just like this, just working it back and forward. Right, there we have it. Beautiful skin fillet. The last little step 
is we're going to get rid of those pin bones, which you can feel they just go to there. This white stuff you get in the back of the belly, that's fine. It's fine to cook, so I just can just feel the pin bones finish there. And I like to go on the belly side first. They just seem to be, it seems to be easiest to go that way and then focus on the top, but we're just going to cut them out by going each side. So go on as close as you can. And then this side, again, close as you can. Cutting all the way down to the board. And then out she goes. Beautiful. While we fill it, you can trim off these little bits here if you want, or just pull them off, which is just where the spines were. But that is ready for cooking however you want, completely boneless, skin off, and delicious, treated right. Right, I'll just skin this other fillet just to give it another look. Wash. Knife a little sharpened. So again, just pinching it down with your thumbnail, easing it in, keeping the knife, knife, knife flat. Then once we get a little ways in, we're going to pick it up, pinch it, and just the combination, wiggling the knife, wiggling the, the fillet with the other hand, keeping that knife flat. There we go. Another beautiful little skinless fillet. And again, just starting with the underside of these pin bones. They do angle slightly down that way, I've found, so just be mindful of that. Put a little curve in your knife just as you're um, finishing up. And over the top. There we go. Beautiful little fillets. Alright, Dino's just ripping it is, but I just thought I'd show you this off. So, I want every few fish, and it's mainly these river fish, which are these darker ones. The ones off the ocean are quite a bit um, more silver. These ones can have the odd little parasitic worm in the flesh. Look, it's probably completely safe to eat those, but you can just cut around them. They're pretty obvious. Cut around them, and you've still got a decent fillet. Anyways, and the frames, look, you can hoik them in if you want, or you can use them for crab bait, but what I'm going to do is keep my couple, and that's going to be used for beachworming bait, which in the very near future, I think, I'm going to release a beachworming guide for anyone who might be interested. Anyways. See you later from me and Dino. Hope you've enjoyed this little harbour session. And I'll catch you next time.